But in terms of public speaking, it took me many years. I took a job after my 10 years in LA, moved back to New York. I took a job with a major training company and I was in charge of designing leadership programs, but I never delivered them. They were always delivered by like, um, you know, the, the, the trainers. So one time we were doing a leadership training program for 12 CEOs in Hilton Head, South Carolina. I got there the day before to set up and everything else. And the morning of the, of the uh, three-day workshop, um, I got a call, of a message from the, the trainer saying that he got sick, he missed his flight the night before and wouldn't be there till the next day or the end of that day. So I called my boss back in New York and I said, what do I do? I have this group of 12 CEOs. And he said, well, we have two choices. We refund everyone's money and it's completely embarrassing. It's gonna cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars or you have to do it. And I was like, I almost fainted on the phone right there. I was like, what do I have to do? He said, what's the problem? You know the content, just get up there and do it. And I did know the content because I designed it, but I was terrified of public speaking and terrible at public speaking. And he expected me to get up in front of a group of 12 CEOs to train them in leadership. I'm like, are you crazy? But you know what? I got up there that morning. I told them the situation. And one of the CEOs said, what are we going to do to help our friend Todd here get through this day? And mm -hmm. I it was such a relief. Talk about leadership again. And what happened was I did the workshop. They knew because my boss said, don't let them know that you're not the trainer. But to me, that was insincere, ingenuine. And, and that's just, that never would have worked. So I did the exact opposite of what he told me to do. I told them the situation and they basically got me through that day. And the irony of at the end of that day, I realized I wasn't that bad at it. And I actually didn't hate it. And actually when I found out the trainer was there and will be, would be there the next day, I actually felt a little bad. So I actually wanted to do the second day at that point. So again, had I not been pushed off the end of the diving board into the water, I never would have raised my hand and voluntarily done that. But given no other choice, I stepped up and you know I didn't do too bad. So that was the first time I ever actually spoke in public. Um, and that's what I do today. But that was my first time dipping my toe into that water. Oh, it, it was more than dipping. <laughs> like yeah. you said, it was being diving. Plunged, being plunged <laughs> off the high diving board. It was a plunge for sure. Thank you for being with us today for this episode of Find Your Voice, Change Your Life. Each person during interviews shares what has helped them find their voice. You can learn from these guests and find your voice so you can be confident to speak up and speak out. And remember to download Doreen's free seven-step guide to fearless speaking at Doreen7steps.com. We hope you enjoyed the show and will return next time. Until then, goodbye for now.